Hi everybody, this is Otis Bradley from 50green.com TV. This is number 28 in a series of short videos on 50 things you can do to green your home now. Today we are talking about solar. Solar 101 because it's solar basics. We're talking about photovoltaic. That means the solar electric versus solar hot water. And we're talking about grid tied systems because they're simple. So what we're going to talk about is the global solar situation. We'll talk about specifics of grid tie systems. Then we'll talk about your home and the cost of solar. Okay, just to start off with, a few fun facts. 93 million miles. That is the distance of the sun to the earth. And one hour of the sun's energy shining on our planet equals more than what the entire planet what we use for an entire year in terms of energy. Two billion people out of a total of about nine billion people currently have no access to electricity at all. Think about that. 15% efficiency. The best solar panels right now are only 15% efficient. That means the, of all the energy that they receive from the sun, they only can turn 15% of that energy into electricity. So engineers are, are always trying to increase that efficiency as well as decrease the cost. And as a matter of fact, the CPW or the cost per watt was 300 bucks per watt in 1950 when panels first came out. In 98 it was about 11 and currently we see it as low as $6 per watt. Only 1 to 2 percent of all the global energy produced is from solar. But that is rapidly increasing. So let's talk about global energy usage. If this pie represents the entire amount of energy used in the world, this big chunk here represents 25%. That's what the United States of America uses. And this chunk here is about 20%. That is what I call Chindia, China and India. And that increased or almost doubled over the last 20 years. Now look at the world population. Here's the USA, a tiny 5%. Remember how much electricity or how much energy we used? We used 25%. And here's China and India, almost 40%. Just something to keep in mind as we go through this. Okay, the global solar situation. The number one country for solar energy installed is Germany. They have almost 10 megawatts of solar power. Now, Germany is a country of about 81 million people representing about 1.2 percent of the global population and they have over eight times the amount of solar power that the United States has which as you can see comes in here number four then we have the Czech Republic Belgium and look who's here China France and India now note that both China and India had almost no solar power ten years ago China is currently the world's largest producer of solar panels and they are hugely ramping up their solar capacity. Okay, so what is a grid tie system? A grid tie system is simply solar panels mounted on a roof which connect to the existing power system. What happens with this system is the sun hits these panels and creates DC electricity which goes to an inverter box, converts DC electricity to AC which is what we use, and it actually makes your meter spin backwards when you're using less electricity than you're producing. So during the day, the solar panels make the most amount of electricity, which is also at the time when the peak demands are for electric companies. So you're producing electricity here and you're sending it out this way. Then at nighttime, when you come home and you turn your lights on and your appliances on, you're drawing back from the grid. So basically you're paying the net amount. In other words, the electricity that you use that's over and above what you produce or if you produce more than you use in some cases you actually get paid for that depends on your local utility okay so a grid tie system is connected to your local electric company there is no storage you need batteries that's a more complicated system if the power goes down in the electric company the power goes down in your house as well as I said if you make more energy than you use in some cases you can get a check at the end of the year you got to check with your utility company grid tie system is simple it's also very effective okay let's talk about your home 
First thing you need to do is measure up. You need to see how much electricity you're currently using. And if you haven't looked at the number one video we have on 50green.com TV, check that out because it tells you all about how to do that. The second thing you want to do is tighten up. So you want to increase your efficiency. This is the place where you can get the greatest payback. So you want to caulk and uh, insulate and make sure your mechanicals are all up to speed in whatever ways that you can. Then you want to check with your utility system and you want to find out if they allow the grid tie systems. I think most of them do now. You also want to figure out what your local and state rebates are and you can do that by looking at this website here dsireusa.org. Then you gotta find a place to put it. You need a southern exposure and you need good sunlight. So obviously some climates are better. Arizona is probably better than Portland, Oregon. The amount of sun that you have in your area will determine how well your solar system works. Okay, this is a slide we use for passive solar design, but you're going to want to think about where your high, the sun is during the summertime at the high point and also the, the low point in determining where you put your panels. So again, in the green building sessions we talk about figuring out your, your latitude and your solar angles. Okay, so this is what a basic solar system looks like. Now let's talk to a professional in the solar industry. Hi, uh, hey, this is Otis here from 50green.com TV, and I am here with Sean. And uh, Sean works with Rec Solar, right? Yeah, Renewable Energy Concepts, or REC. And uh, Sean was just telling me he's been around solar uh, his whole life. He grew up in a house that your mom built. Yeah, we, uh, we built our own house, passive solar design home, and got a grant from the state of Ohio to do an off-grid home. It was cheaper to do solar than to run power to the house, so we decided to uh, take our, our solar living to the, the extreme and build a solar house. That's awesome. What year was did she build that house? This was in uh, 1998 she built this house. Well, she's ahead of her time. Yeah, yep, mm -hmm. definitely. All right, so Sean, here's the deal. A lot of people have questions about solar. I'm sure you know we're here at the show and, and people are asking questions. Assume, just for basic um, conversation purposes, assume I have a house, I use 33 watts a, a day, 33 kilowatts, 1,000, average it out to 1,000 a month, and I have a nice solar, southern exposure for solar panels. I've got, all right, so I'm using 12,000 kilowatts a year, right? What would I need for a, for a system? We're talking a grid-tied system. Right. So for me to do an assessment and, and to really find out the best solution for you, for one, I would, I would start by looking at your electric bills. And you say you use 1,100, 1,200 kilowatt hours per month, assuming. So what I'd look at is, on a monthly basis, is that true throughout the whole year? We want to know how much you use on you know, per month. Per if you use it more during the winter, per, summer, that correct. kind of thing. And that would right. affect my design. That right. would be how I would kind of you know work around kind of a smart design for the solar. Gotcha. Uh, now, in looking at your bills, I also look at how the utility company charges you. So we look at you know if we want to do 100% solar, you want to be 100% you know renewable energy. Yeah, because California we have these four five tiers, this right. crazy right. Uh, stuff. Right. So but just keep it. Right. If we're talking Simple. basics. Let's say right. we use 12. Thousand kilowatts a year. Right. Ballpark, we'd need uh, well, maybe around a six kilowatt system. Six kilowatt system, right? right? Yep. And would you say I, I understand like an average? If you sort of took a national average of home systems, are three or four kilowatts? Is that yeah, right around there. Reasonable. Yeah. You know, and, and me being out there every day, every week doing solar, I'm, I'm seeing everywhere between the small side of a two kilowatt system to a 10, 20 kilowatt system oh, wow. for larger homes in the area. Okay. And obviously, every state has different uh, solar rebate uh, issues, and there's a federal uh, tax credit of somewhere around 30%, which saves you a lot of money in a solar system. But assume uh, we're putting in a six kilowatt system here in, in California. What would be our gross cost? You know, you might be looking now around maybe 38,000, 40,000 okay. for the gross cost. And then you have the uh, state rebates, as you mentioned. Okay. Are, they're based upon design as well as the tax credit, which is a 30% federal tax credit. So all across the nation, you get 30%, and then depending on your own state, you may get some special deals. And right now, you're telling me 
uh, California, Hawaii, Arizona, New Jersey has some new stuff going on in right. Colorado. Right. All those states are sort of slam dunks for solar, right? Right, yeah, and it's really about, you know, if it, if it makes sense economically, if we can see savings, then it's, it's a place you want to put solar on. Yeah. Uh, and if uh, your state doesn't have a, a good solar program, you got to get out there and bang in the doors with your representatives and get one because it, we need to have these right. in every state. Right. And bang on the doors of the utility companies as well. Alright. Excellent. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so cost. Everybody wants to know how much is it going to cost. And solar electric panels are expensive. But there are a couple ways to do it. So take a look. First thing you need to know is your system size. The second thing you need to figure out is the cost per watt of installed solar in your area. And then the federal tax credit. So let's just take, for example, a three kilowatt system, right? That equals 3,000 watts. So if we multiplied that times six dollars per watt, that would equal 18,000. But let's just call it 20,000 for easy math. Okay? So a 30% tax credit would be $6,000. And what a tax credit means, in case you don't know, is that the amount of taxes you owe at the end of the year is reduced by $6,000. So it's a dollar for dollar return. It's not a tax deduction. So our original cost is $20,000. Then we're going to subtract out $6,000. Then we're going to figure out what our local incentive is. And that could be two things. It could be a state incentive and a local community incentive. But in this case, let's say that we have another 20% of incentives, which would be 4000 more dollars off. That means that our net cost for the system would be $10,000, or half of the original cost of this system. But if you don't want to spend a single dime there are now several different companies and if you google solar leasing you'll find them who do zero down leasing options and what this means is a company will install a solar system on your roof at no charge to you and then they will guarantee a certain rate per watt for electricity obviously you want to pay attention to the leasing terms but most of them have buyouts you can buy the system most of the these options or most of these leases also can be transferred to a new owner if you sell your house. That pretty much takes out the pain of all the upfront cost on solar because even if you had to pay $10,000 and you have no electricity bill every year, you still got to come up with $10,000. So if you don't need to come up with $10,000, there's no risk involved, right? Okay, so why do solar? Well, over the long run, you're going to save money. You're going to increase the United States total solar energy, and that's important for a bunch of reasons. One, it improves our grid. Our electric system, which is called the grid, which is basically all the wires that string throughout the United States, is a antiquated system. And by having more solar systems, it helps improve the performance of that grid. It'll also decrease the dependence on foreign oil. It's important for the United States. And of course, it's going to save the Earth and the oceans as well. So that's number 28. Take a look. Call your local solar guy. Do it now. See if it makes sense for you. Thank you very much. This is Otis Bradley signing out. We'll see you on the next video.